Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 11 to 20 for the Certified Ethical Hacker V13 exam. Let's begin. A newly joined employee, Janet, has been allocated an existing system used by a previous employee. Before issuing the system to Janet, it was assessed by Martin, the administrator. Martin found that there were possibilities of compromise through user directories, registries, and other system parameters. He also identified vulnerabilities such as native configuration tables, incorrect registry or file permissions, and software configuration errors. What is the type of vulnerability assessment performed by Martin? The correct answer is B. Host-based assessment. A host-based assessment involves scanning and analyzing individual systems for vulnerabilities such as misconfigured registries, file permissions, user directories, and local configurations, exactly what Martin did before assigning the system to Janet. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Database assessment. This focuses specifically on database systems, not general host systems. C. Credential assessment. This uses valid login credentials to perform in-depth scanning, but the question does not specify credential access. It focuses on the host's local configurations instead. D. Distributed assessment. This involves using multiple systems or agents to conduct a wide-scale scan, not relevant in this single host scenario. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Jane, an ethical hacker, is testing a target organization's web server and website to identify security loopholes. In this process, she copied the entire website and its content to a local drive to view the complete profile of the site's directory structure, file structure, external links, images, web pages, and so on. This information helps Jane map the website's directories and gain valuable information. What is the attack technique employed by Jane in the above scenario? The correct answer is B. Website mirroring. Jane is performing website mirroring, which involves copying an entire website and its contents to a local drive. This allows her to analyze the directory structure, files, links, and other resources offline, a common technique during the reconnaissance phase of ethical hacking. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Session hijacking. This involves stealing a user's session token to impersonate them, unrelated to downloading site content. C. Website defacement. This is an attack that modifies the visual appearance or content of a website, not applicable here. D. Web cache poisoning. This involves injecting malicious content into a web cache to serve it to users, again, unrelated to copying the site for analysis. Therefore, the correct answer is B. An organization is performing a vulnerability assessment for mitigating threats. James, a pen tester, scanned the organization by building an inventory of the protocols found on the organization's machines to detect which ports are attached to services, such as an email server, a web server, or a database server. After identifying the services, he selected the vulnerabilities on each machine and started executing only the relevant tests. What is the type of vulnerability assessment solution that James employed in the above scenario? The correct answer is D. Inference-based assessment. Inference-based assessment involves identifying services running on a system, like web, email, or database servers, and then selectively executing only the relevant vulnerability tests based on those identified services. This is exactly what James did in the scenario. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Service-based solutions. The focus is on specific services across multiple systems, not on tailoring tests to each host's configuration. B. Product-based solutions. This involves commercial tools installed within the network. The scenario describes a method, not a specific product-based deployment. C. Tree-based assessment. This uses a predefined decision tree of vulnerabilities to test, it does not dynamically adapt based on identified services like inference-based assessment does. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Taylor, a security professional, uses a tool to monitor her company's website, analyze the website's traffic, and track the geographical location of the users visiting the company's website. Which of the following tools did Taylor employ in the above scenario? The correct answer is 
B. Webstat Webstat is a web analytics tool that allows users to monitor website traffic, analyze visitor behavior, and track the geographical location of visitors. This matches exactly what Taylor is doing in the scenario. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Webroot This is a cybersecurity solution focused on antivirus and endpoint protection, not web analytics. C. Website Watcher This is used for monitoring website changes like content updates, not for analyzing traffic or visitor locations. D. Web Woof This is used to detect web application firewalls on a target site. It's a reconnaissance tool, not for traffic monitoring. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Becky has been hired by a client from Dubai to perform a penetration test against one of their remote offices. Working from her location in Columbus, Ohio, Becky runs her usual reconnaissance scans to obtain basic information about their network. When analyzing the results of her Who Is search, Becky notices that the IP was allocated to a location in Le Havre, France. Which regional internet registry should Becky go to for detailed information? The correct answer is D. RIPE The RIPE NCC is the regional internet registry responsible for IP address allocations in Europe, the Middle East, and parts of Central Asia, including France. Why the other options are incorrect? A. ARIN This handles IP allocations for North America, including the US, not Europe. B. LATNIC This is responsible for Latin America and parts of the Caribbean not relevant to France. C. Epnic. This manages IP addresses in the Asia-Pacific region. France is not covered. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Harry, a professional hacker, targets the IT infrastructure of an organization. After preparing for the attack, he attempts to enter the target network using techniques such as sending spear phishing emails and exploiting vulnerabilities on publicly available servers. Using these techniques, he successfully deployed malware on the target system to establish an outbound connection. What is the APT lifecycle phase that Harry is currently executing? A. Initial intrusion Harry is executing the initial intrusion phase of the APT lifecycle. This phase involves gaining access to the target network, through methods like spear phishing and exploiting public-facing vulnerabilities and deploying malware to establish a foothold. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Persistence. This comes after initial intrusion. It involves ensuring continued access. C. Cleanup. This happens at the end of an attack to remove traces and avoid detection. D. Preparation. This occurs before the attack begins, including reconnaissance, tool setup, and planning. Harry has already moved beyond this. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Robin, a professional hacker, targeted an organization's network to sniff all the traffic. During this process, Robin plugged in a rogue switch to an unused port in the LAN with a priority lower than any other switch in the network so that he could make it a root bridge that will later allow him to sniff all the traffic in the network. What is the attack performed by Robin in the above scenario? The correct answer is B. STP attack Robin performed a STP attack by introducing a rogue switch with a lower bridge priority to become the root bridge. This manipulates network topology, allowing the attacker to control traffic paths and sniff traffic across the LAN. Why the other options are incorrect? A. ARP spoofing attack This involves sending forged ARP messages to associate the attacker's MAC address with the IP of another device, unrelated to bridge priority or STP. C. DNS poisoning attack This targets DNS resolution to redirect users to malicious sites, not related to LAN switches or sniffing all traffic. D. VLAN hopping attack This involves crossing VLAN boundaries by exploiting switch configurations, not about becoming the root bridge or redirecting traffic paths. Therefore, the correct answer is B. An attacker utilizes a Wi-Fi pineapple to run an access point with a legitimate-looking SSID for a nearby business in order to capture the wireless password. What kind of attack is this? The correct answer is D. Evil Twin Attack This is an evil twin attack. 
where the attacker sets up a rogue Wi-Fi access point with a legitimate looking SSID to trick users into connecting. Once connected, the attacker can intercept traffic and capture credentials like the wireless password. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Mac spoofing attack. This involves changing the MAC address of a device to bypass access controls, not creating fake access points. B. War driving attack. This is the act of driving around to find and map wireless networks, not actively impersonating an access point. C. Phishing attack. This tricks users into revealing sensitive info via fake websites or emails, not specific to wireless impersonation like an evil twin. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Cybertech INC recently experienced SQL injection attacks on its official website. The company appointed Bob, a security professional, to build and incorporate defensive strategies against such attacks. Bob adopted a practice whereby only a list of entities such as the data type, range, size and value, which have been approved for secure access, is accepted. What is the defensive technique employed by Bob in the above scenario? The correct answer is A. Whitelist validation. Bob is using whitelist validation, where only pre-approved inputs are accepted. This is an effective defense against SQL injection, as it ensures only known safe data enters the application. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Output encoding. This is used to prevent cross-site scripting by encoding output before displaying it, not for validating input. C. Blacklist validation. This blocks known bad inputs but is less secure than whitelisting, as new malicious inputs can bypass it. D. Enforce least privileges. This limits user access rights, important for security but not directly related to input validation for SQL injection. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Joe works as an IT administrator in an organization and has recently set up a cloud computing service for the organization. To implement this service, he reached out to a telecom company for providing internet connectivity and transport services between the organization and the cloud service provider. In the NIST cloud deployment reference architecture, under which category does the telecom company fall in the above scenario? The correct answer is D. Cloud Carrier In the NIST Cloud Deployment Reference Architecture, a cloud carrier is the entity that provides connectivity and transport between the cloud consumer and the cloud provider. In this case, the telecom company is acting as the cloud carrier. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Cloud Consumer The organization using the cloud services is the cloud consumer, not the telecom company. B. Cloud Broker a cloud broker manages the use, performance, and delivery of cloud services, not just network transport. C. Cloud Auditor This evaluates the security and compliance of cloud services and has no role in network connectivity. Therefore, the correct answer is D. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye!